Hi, welcome back to Brentech IT Support. Today we're going to be looking at unboxing and setting up of the Synology DS918 Plus. Now this is just become end of line as of today really. I've got the last one in the country and the 920 Plus is coming out at the end of this month but they're going to be very very similar machines. Uh, managed to get this one on sale because it was the last one they had so if you are able to spot them probably worthwhile getting these over the 920 just because of the price saving. The processor and memory are a little bit faster than the new one but that's about it. That They haven't really improved them that much. All the other reviews are saying the same thing so I'm going to follow them. Obviously I haven't tested this yet or the new one but that seems to be quite sensible because it didn't get the faster Ethernet ports which everyone was hoping for. If it did, that would have been a different story. But for now, we'll get into unboxing and setting up the 918 Plus. We've got a power cable, but no bricks so far. Just cut those from the side. Now this does come without any hard drives at all which is why I've already got the Seagate Ironwolf hard drive to put in it. You can start the array with just one drive in the Synology and then add up to four more in this one with an expansion for an extra five bays. In the bigger box we get the power brick. Quick start guide. Some drive screws, but you'll only need those if you're putting in SSDs as it comes with plastic trays that are already uh, clip fit. Some little plastic keys, they're not secure keys, they're just to stop you from accidentally ejecting the drives when you're just moving things around and handling it. Two Cat5e cables. And the unit itself. Mm. On the back we've got two fans that are controlled independently with temperature sensors so it will automatically adjust the speed of the fans to help the maintain a cool temperature. You've got two one gig ethernet ports that's what lets it, the new one down, is that they haven't made them 2.5G ports or any expansion for a new one, which is why this is actually better value for money in quite a lot of respects. You've got your SATA connector, so you can expand it with an extra five bays that they do. Power supply, USB 3, and Kensington lock for security. On the side, you've got some ventilation. Other side, more ventilation, plain top, and you've got your all plastic drive racks. There's no lights in them, so there's nothing actually indicating what drive is doing what directly on them, but you do have your little drive LEDs down there indicating what drive is being used. USB P3 port at the front and power switch. Gain more airflow at the back, out of the side. On the bottom, now this is what I love about this one and the new model as well, is you've got the ability to put not one, but two solid state uh, memory boosts in there. So you can upgrade that as well. Now it only does it for SSD caching, it doesn't allow you to store the files on there, but it will give a massive boost to performance. It doesn't come with them and they are relatively pricey, so it's good to have that option to put it in and it's good that it doesn't come with them in a way because it keeps the cost down for initial setup. If you know you're going to be a power user then you'll either be buying a newer more expensive model or you'll have order them at the same time. Setting this up couldn't be any easier. You simply pull out a drive Unclip the rails, take your hard drive or SSD, 
gently place it in. Where the screws normally go, it lines up with the little holes there. And then you just push fit the rails back in. And that holds it in place. I'll show you the inside where you've got the memory expansion as well. Now, hopefully we'll see on the inside that there is a blank slot there for you to put your extra four gig of RAM, but just further back in there, which you probably can't see, is another four gig module already installed. So it is upgradable and you can also swap out memory if it does get bad, which is a lovely feature of this one. And if you look all the way through, you can easily see how much airflow there would be through that. That is absolutely excellent airflow. That will keep your drives running nice and cool. Now I'm upgrading from a QNAP machine. So the drive I've got here, I was had in my old QNAP whilst I was just doing some testing and tinkering around with that one. So I assume that I'm going to lose all my data on there, which I quite expect because I'm going from QNAP to Synology. The same would happen, I would have thought, if I go from Synology to QNAP. But if you're staying with the same brand, then it hopefully it will retain your data, and so you can just migrate from one system to another. That actually does fit in very nicely. The old QNAP one with the metal runners, a little bit stiff. Yeah, and then you can see that that's locked that one in and that one pops out nice and easy. It's not vital that you lock them, but you might as well. It's just that extra peace of mind so you know you don't accidentally pull them out. You get an Ethernet cable, plug that into LAN 1, which is the closest one to this side. It doesn't matter if you connect it to land one or two, but I just like to do it that way. Get your power brick. Connect your power brick first, and then plug in the device. And power it on. That kicks out a nice bit of airflow just immediately from turn on. Now that, it's quite nice and quiet. It's got to do a boot sequence first, so we'll let that boot up and then we'll get onto the computer and I'll show you the setup from the web GUI as well. Okay, it's all up and running now. It beeped. It's actually a very quick startup. It didn't take long at all before it went and beeped to tell me that it was active. So we'll come and have a look at the screen. You can go to findsynology.com and click enter in your web browser and hopefully it will find it straight away for you. If not, you can go into your router's IP settings and actually find your IP address, which we're gonna do, and I'm gonna set it to a static IP address and I'm gonna activate link aggravation later on. So there's more to it, but this is just the initial quick setup. It has found it straight away. That looks very good. So it's not been installed. Just click connect. Of course we agree to the license agreement. We have no choice. Click OK. Click setup. So it's going to download the firmware for it and the operating system straight away. So yeah, we'll go install. I understand that all data will be removed. Now, because this is effectively a new disc going into this machine or an old disc um, from an old machine that is not a Synology is going to do this format. If it was going from Synology to Synology or if it was going from QNAP to QNAP, it's a very similar sort of process between the two it will just say, oh, we found this off system. Do you want us to carry on installing it and migrate? So, but most people, this would be your first thing that you see. So that's perfectly expected. 
and I'm happy to lose my data. I've already got that backed up somewhere else, so go okay. The reason why I've chosen to go to the Synology rather than sticking with QNAP is because of their drive management system where it allows you to mix and match drive sizes. On our old one I've got two 4 terabyte drives and two 1 terabyte drives because as drives failed I just replaced them with cost efficient drives and I've still only got a very small array. So to upgrade it I need to buy another two 4 terabyte drives or bigger and it's just not so cost efficient. This one mix and match them. They don't recommend it but it is designed to do it. So it's actually part, actually they do really recommend it in this one because they do say our software, uh, the Synology drive management system allows for mixed drive sizes as long as you have two of a larger size it will upgrade to the smallest of those two. So you always do get a bit of a boost. It's now restarting the drive station. That's nice and quick, much quicker than my old QNAP. But my old QNAP is a very, very old one. It was over 10 years old now, so that's not a fair comparison. Well, I just heard the fans just kick up a little bit whilst doing that. And then they go back down. That is nice and quiet. I do like this box. Another advantage with this over the QNAP is the software on the Synology is far superior. QNAP is getting a lot better. Um, the two different QNAPs that I've got, I can really tell how much they've improved from when I first got one. But the Synology Drive software just looks so much sleeker. And for me and the way I want to work, it is going to be perfect. It will allow me to have copies locally on my laptop for video editing so that when I go out in the field, I've got it with me. I don't have to have internet connection or network connection. When I come back, then it will automatically resync it with the server and locally it will sync it to my other computers in the office. Brilliant. Remotely, if I want to grab a file that I haven't got on my laptop because I don't want to fill my drive up fully with old videos, it will allow you to say, I just want to stream certain files. I'll show you all this later on. And that is a brilliant feature. The QNAP one, you either have it or you don't. And if you say I don't want it on my machine, you delete it locally and you can't reference it. You can't see it. You just lose it. You have to say, right, okay, show all hidden files sort of things and, and re-get them all again. So that's not so user-friendly, which is a shame because I really did like my QNAP, my old one. Um, but this one, I think is going to really sort me out and serve us well. And now with the way people are going at the moment and living and with the coronavirus and lockdown, having one of these at home, just a small one, you only need a, a two bay one, that will serve you so well. And then um, you can use people like me with other services where you've got bigger ones. You can then back that up to a remote NAS, such as this one here, so you've actually got a full backup because the NAS is not a backup, it's a file repository system. Even if you do have it in RAID, where you have it on multiple drives, if the system itself fails, you still lose everything. Although this has drive redundancy, so if you do lose a drive, you haven't lost everything straight away, you've got a error of margin to recover. But if that system goes down, that is potentially it. So don't assume that you have one of these, you have a backup. It's a file storage system, that's all it is. And if you have two of them, then it becomes a backup system. unless you leave all your main files on your computer and then the backup would be this. Okay, now come back to the screen and we need to enter our information. to your terms and conditions, you know, so you acknowledge your privacy statement. OK, 
Okay, so we've got some updates to do. We'll just work our way through these. I'm okay with that. Okay, it's nice that it takes you through a little tutorial as well. That's actually quite good. I don't think the QNAP does that one. If it does, it's much more of a texty thing. It doesn't actually show you things so well. And I love this display panel down here. That is so nice showing me all the resources. That is very good. That is very good. Right. Packages installers. Yes, yeah, so you want to agree to this. Everyone's going to want to set their ones up differently. This is the way I'm setting my one up for what I need to do. Now I want to have the active backup for business. Create a volume. Now, I would do their quick, quick one, leave it as is. Because this is where we're getting the Synology hybrid RAID. That's what I was telling you about earlier. That's the bit that allows you to mix and match drives. Very, very useful. Yeah, if you want to erase data. And again, now, this is the standard one, the EXT4. That's what most NAS arrays use for their file systems. But the BTRF is Synology's own branded one, and that works very well. They really integrate it well, so I'd recommend sticking with that as well. It's warning us it hasn't got data protection because you haven't got the extra drive. That's to be expected. As soon as I get another drive, I'll be popping that in and that will do it straight away. Whereas to set this up, if this was the QNAP, I'd be having to buy at least three drives to get it up and running for a RAID. Which, well, I'm happy to risk not having the full data protection whilst I'm just doing setup and testing. I don't need the full array just to test it. This is brilliant. Thank you, Synology. I like it. Again, you can put SSD drives in here as well, but I'm just gonna leave it with standard drives when I do set it all up. Option for hot spare and SSD caching, which is the two bays at the bottom. And if I do use it a lot, I'll be doing that. Yeah, minimize that and hopefully we can carry on whilst that's going on. We can indeed, that is good. We can see that we're not even touching the resources whilst it's doing that. This is brilliant. And you're going to want to go through all of these and work out what setup you do want for yourself. They certainly do provide a whole host straight out of the box. Okay, that's nice that they actually do give you the option for beta programs. Some people really enjoy that. Some people want more stability of tried and tested programs. Absolutely fair enough. I would normally go for the beta ones if it was just for me, but as I'm gonna be issuing this out to other people to do backups on my system, I'm not gonna be doing that at the moment. I'll just start off with the free uh, virus scanner, it's best to have it, but it may well be worth investing in the McAfee one. Personally, I don't like McAfee uh, virus scanners. I always prefer Panda internet security, a much more stable, much more reliable, far better predict, um, correct, true detection of viruses as well. I always swear by Panda, which is why that's the one I sell and recommend, whereas 
McAfee and Norton. Mm, no, I don't don't recommend them. Now this is what I was looking for for um, the QNAP version as well. I think by the looks of it. This is this is why Synology is renowned for their software. The QNAP's hardware is generally better, but you're paying more for a lower spec machine from Synology, but getting far far superior software. Okay, that looks good for me for now. I'll just have a quick look at this to see how this runs. Because before you put data on, you do want some form of security, so it's nice that they are giving us that. So, very simple logical interface. Okay, I'll do a full system scan on the weekend. And every other day for a rest. Certainly is running nice and quick, I do like it. It is nice and quiet. It, it's my old computer that you can hear making all the noise. Okay, whilst that's doing that, we should be able to come to control panel and we've got our shared folders you've got your users so you can create your users over here you've got user groups so you can see which ports are active for DHCP. We've got our router managing that, so that's okay. Now, once I move this downstairs, I'm sure we'll do some link aggregation as well but it's, detect it's where it's detecting things. It's very clearly laid out. I do like this a lot. Grab to make sure I've got a certificate. I'm hoping they're going to provide one. Enable the firewall. Enable DNS protection. This is good, they've automatically got it so that it will, if somebody tries to log in 10 times within five minutes, it will automatically block that IP address indefinitely. Very good. So yeah, you can actually have the accounts protected as well. That's a nice idea. So I'll apply that. It's very, very easy to work through. They've automatically given it a self-signed certificate. Very nice. Thank you very much for that. That makes life easier. As they have given us a certificate, I can tell it to go over HTTPS. If 
advanced to seed. Okay, that's all gone through. Again, go to control panel. You can just create new users. Just very simple. Okay, well that's just a quick setup. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy that. If you did like it, give it a good thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, as always, it's nice seeing you. Take care. Bye for now. I just thought I'd put a quick side-by-side -side comparison from my old QNAP to the new Synology. And you can actually see that it's a little bit shorter. It's only slightly wider. These are all the metal rails that are a bit more sticky. But you can see not so much airflow as there's only one fan in the back. A little bit of airflow from the side, none from that side, none on the bottom and just that one fan. Now you do get two SATA ports, two Ethernet ports, and at the time the three USB 3 ports at the back was actually pretty impressive, especially with a, another USB 2 port at the front. Now this is old, so don't expect USB 3 on this at, at that time, and I got this, that was very advanced. But you can see that they put a lot of ports onto that one when that came out. But the Synology one, it is, you can just see light coming through it all the way. So that's going to be much, much better for airflow to help keep it cool. Now, for something that's going to be on 24-7, that I'd say is something that's actually quite important. And this is where the metal drives can just get a little bit sticky. They all went in this easiest time. But very happy with this one so far.